The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse by Thornton W. Burgess. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Cast in order as you meet them. Narrator, read by Lynette Geisel. Danny Meadow Mouse, read by Marty Chris. Striped Chipmunk, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Johnny Chuck, read by Barry Eads. Old Mr. Toad, read by Scott Jackson. Reddy Fox, read by Chris Marcellus. Granny Fox, read by Patty Cunningham. Hooty the Owl, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Tommy Tit the Chickadee, read by Amy Graymore. Peter Rabbit, read by Todd. Farmer Brown, read by Barry Eads. Farmer Brown's boy, read by Cheyenne Donnell. End cast. Chapter 1. Danny Meadow Mouse is Worried. Danny Meadow Mouse sat on his doorstep with his chin in his hands, and it was very plain to see that Danny had something on his mind. He had only a nod for Jimmy Skunk, and even Peter Rabbit could get no more than a grumpy, Good morning! It wasn't that he had been caught napping the day before by Reddy Fox and nearly made an end of. No, that wasn't it. Danny had learned his lesson, and Reddy would never catch him again. It wasn't that he was all alone with no one to play with. Danny was really glad that he was alone. The fact is, Danny Meadowbouse was worried. Now, worry is one of the worst things in the world, and it didn't seem as if there was anything that Danny Meadow Mouse need worry about. But you know, it is the easiest thing in the world to find something to worry over and make yourself uncomfortable about. And when you make yourself uncomfortable, you are almost sure to make everyone around you equally uncomfortable. It was so with Danny Meadow Mouse. Striped Chipmunk had twice called him Crosspatch that morning, and Johnny Chuck, who had fought Reddy Fox for him the day before, had called him Grumpy. And what do you think was the matter with Danny Meadow Mouse? Why, he was worrying because his tail was short. Yes, sir, that is all that ailed Danny Meadow Mouse that bright morning. You know, some people let their looks make them miserable. They worry because they are homely, or freckled, or short, or tall, or thin, or stout, all of which is very foolish. And Daddy Meadow Mouse was just as foolish in worrying because his tail was short. It is short. It certainly is all of that. Danny never had realized how short until he chanced to meet his cousin Whitefoot, who lives in the Green Forest. He was very elegantly dressed, but the most imposing thing about him was his long, slim, beautiful tail. Danny had at once become conscious of his own stubby little tail, and he had hardly had pride enough to hold his head up as become an honest meadow mouse. Ever since, he had been thinking and thinking and wondering how his family could have such short tails. Then he grew envious and began to wish and wish and wish that he could have a long tail like his cousin Whitefoot. He was so busy wishing that he had a long tail that he quite forgot to take care of the tail he did have, and he pretty nearly lost it and his life with it. Old Whitetail the Marsh Hawk spied Danny sitting there moping on his doorstep and came sailing over the tops of the meadow grasses so softly that he all but caught Danny. If it hadn't been for one of the merry little breezes, Danny would have been caught, and all because he was envious. It's a bad, bad habit. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 Danny Meadow Mouse and His Short Tail All Danny Meadow Mouse could think about was his short tail. 
he was so ashamed of it that whenever anyone passed he crawled out of sight so that they should not see how short his tail was instead of playing in the sunshine as he used to he sat and sulked pretty soon his friends began to pass without stopping finally one day old mr toad sat down in front of danny and began to ask questions what's the matter asked old mr toad nothing replied danny meadow mouse i don't suppose there really is anything the matter but what do you think is the matter said old mr toad danny fidgeted and old mr toad looked up at jolly round red mr sun and winked sun is just as bright as ever isn't it he inquired yes said danny got plenty to eat and drink haven't you continued mr toad yes said danny seems to me that that is a pretty good-looking suit of clothes you're wearing said mr toad eyeing danny critically sunny weather plenty to eat and drink and good clothes must be you don't know when you're well off danny meadow mouse danny hung his head finally he looked up and caught a kindly twinkle in old mr toad's eyes mr toad how can i get a long tail like my cousin whitefoot of the green forest he asked so that's what's the matter <laughs> danny meadow mouse i'm ashamed of you i certainly am ashamed of you said mr toad what good would a long tail do you tell me that for a minute danny didn't know just what to say i i i'd look so much better if i had a long tail he ventured old mr toad just laughed you never saw a meadow mouse with a long tail did you of course not what a sight it would be why everybody on the green meadows would laugh themselves sick at the sight you see you need to be slim and trim and handsome to carry a long tail well and then what a nuisance it would be you would always have to be thinking of your tail and taking care to keep it out of harm's way look at me i am homely some folks call me ugly to look at but no one tries to catch me as farmer brown's boy does billy mink because of his fine coat and no one wants to put me in a cage because of a fine voice i am satisfied to be just as i am and if you'll take my advice danny meadow mouse you'll be satisfied to be just as you are perhaps you are right said danny meadow mouse after a little i'll try end of chapter two chapter three danny meadow mouse plays hide and seek life is always a game of hide and seek to danny meadow mouse you see he is such a fat little fellow that there are a great many other furry coated people and almost as many who wear feathers who would gobble danny up for breakfast or for dinner if they could some of them pretend to be his friends but danny always keeps his eyes open when they are around and always begins to play hide-and-seek peter rabbit and jimmy skunk and striped chipmunk and happy jack squirrel are all friends whom he can trust but he always has a bright twinkling eye open for reddy fox and billy mink and shadow the weasel and old whitetail the marsh hawk and several more especially hooty the owl at night now danny meadow mouse is a stout-hearted little fellow and when rough brother north wind came shouting across the green meadows tearing to pieces the snow clouds and shaking out the snowflakes until they covered the green meadows deep 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 danny just snuggled down in his warm coat in his snug little house of grass and waited danny liked the snow yes sir danny meadow mouse liked the snow he just loved to dig in it and make tunnels through those tunnels in every direction he could go where he pleased and when he pleased without being seen by anybody it was great fun every little way he made a little round doorway 
up beside a stiff stalk of grass. Out of this he could peep at the white world, and he could get the fresh cold air. Sometimes, when he was quite sure that no one was around, he would scamper across on top of the snow from one doorway to another. And when he did this, he made the prettiest little footprints. Now Reddy Fox knew all about those doorways and who made them. Reddy was having hard work to get enough to eat this cold winter, and he was hungry most of the time. One morning, as he came tiptoeing softly over the meadows, what should he see just ahead of him but the head of Danny Meadow Mouse pop out of one of those little round doorways? Reddy's mouth watered, and he stole forward more softly than ever. When he got within jumping distance, he drew his stout hind legs under him and made Reddy to spring. Presto! Danny Meadow Mouse had disappeared. Reddy Fox jumped just the same and began to dig as fast as he could make his paws go. He could smell Danny Meadow Mouse, and that made him almost frantic. All the time, Danny Meadow Mouse was scurrying along one of his little tunnels, and when finally Reddy Fox stopped digging because he was quite out of breath, Danny popped his head out of another little doorway and laughed at Reddy. Of course Reddy saw him, and of course Reddy tried to catch him there and dug frantically just as before. And of course Danny Meadow Mouse wasn't there. After a while Reddy Fox grew tired of this kind of a game and tried another plan. The next time he saw Danny Meadow Mouse stick his head out, Reddy pretended not to see him. He stretched himself out on the ground and made believe that he was very tired and sleepy. He closed his eyes. Then he opened them just the tiniest bit so that he could see Danny Meadow Mouse and yet seem to be asleep. Danny watched him for a long time. Then he chuckled to himself and dropped out of sight. No sooner was he gone than Reddy Fox stole over close to the little doorway and waited. He'll surely stick his head out again to see if I'm asleep, and then I'll have him, said Reddy to himself. So he waited and waited and waited. By and by, he turned his head. There was Danny Meadow Mouse at another little doorway laughing at him. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 Old Granny Fox Tries for Danny Meadow Mouse Danny Meadow Mouse had not enjoyed anything so much for a long time as he did that game of hide-and-seek. He tickled and chuckled all the afternoon as he thought about it. Of course, Reddy had been it. He had been it all the time for never once had he caught Danny Meadow Mouse. If he had, well, there wouldn't have been any more stories about Danny Meadow Mouse, because there wouldn't have been any Danny Meadow Mouse anymore. But Danny never let himself think about this. He had enjoyed the game all the more, because it had been such a dangerous game. It had been such fun to dive into one of his little round doorways in the snow, run along one of his own little tunnels, and then peep out at another doorway and watch Reddy Fox digging as fast as ever he could at the doorway Danny had just left. Finally, Reddy had given up in disgust and gone off muttering angrily to find someone else for dinner. Danny had set up on the snow and watched him go. In his funny little squeaky voice, Danny shouted, Though Reddy Fox is smart and sly, hi hum diddle dee o, oh, I'm just as smart and twice as spry, hi hum diddle dee o. Oh. That night, Reddy Fox told Old Granny Fox all about how he had tried to catch Danny Meadow Mouse. Granny listened with her head cocked on one side. When Reddy told how fat Danny Meadow Mouse was, her mouth watered. You see, 
now that snow covered the green meadows and the green forest granny and reddy fox had hard work to get enough to eat and they were hungry most of the time i'll go with you down on the meadows tomorrow morning and then we'll see if danny meadow mouse is as smart as he thinks he is said granny fox so bright and early the next morning old granny fox and reddy fox went down on the meadows where danny meadow mouse lives danny had felt in his bones that reddy would come back so he was watching and he saw them as soon as they came out of the green forest when he saw old granny fox danny's heart beat a little faster than before for he knew that granny fox is very smart and very wise and has learned most of the tricks of all the other little meadow and forest people this is going to be a more exciting game than the other said danny to himself and scurried down out of sight to see that all his little tunnels were clear so that he could run fast through them if he had to then he peeped out of one of his little doorways hidden in a clump of tall grass old granny fox set ready to hunting for danny's little round doorways and as fast as he could find them granny came up and sniffed at each she knew that she could tell by the smell which one he had been at last finally she came straight towards the tall bunch of grass danny ducked down and scurried along one of his little tunnels he heard granny fox sniff at the doorway he had just left suddenly something plunged down through the snow right at his very heels danny didn't have to look to know that it was granny fox herself and he squeaked with fright End of chapter four